Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. Um, this is our What Works for Children's Social Care webinar on practice in need of evidence, multi-agency working. We're delighted to have Anna Bachu, Head of Practice for the What Works Centre, as well as Namal, um, Practice Development Consultant Manager. And today we'll cover what the Pine Programme is and hear a little bit more about the application process. Anna's going to do a short presentation, bring us all up to speed on um, PINE so far, what's been working well, some of the challenges and some of the opportunities. And Namal is also going to share her reflections on the first round of the programme. Of course, there will be a Q&A towards the end of the session, so you have an opportunity to ask your questions and we will do our best to answer them. Okay, over to you, Anna. Thank you, Emma. Right, so I'm going to go through some slides, which hopefully you've got access to if you're listening. Um, so first of all, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, the principles of what works. So what's important to us at the What Works Centre for Children's Social Care. Um, so we have four principles, impact, nuance, usefulness and empowerment. And we apply these to all of our research programmes and everything we do at the centre. But the reason I've put this slide in here is because this is really relevant to our Practice in Need of Evidence programme. Um, each principle really kind of hits the mark in terms of this programme. So the first principle is impact, and that's about the type of evidence and the type of research methodology that we're interested in. We're really, really focused on evidence and research that shows us the impact of one thing on another. So the impact of an intervention on outcomes for children and families. What we're doing with PINE is trying to find existing practice, which we know as practitioners is working. That's our kind of practice experience. That's the anecdotal evidence. That actually, there isn't a firm research evidence base for it. And trying to create that firm evidence base by getting towards answering an impact question. That is hard to do. And that's why there isn't loads of impact research out there. because demonstrating or proving impact is really quite complex and challenging but that's our aspiration with this program is that we will get organisations to a place where they're starting to be able to demonstrate impact. The second principle is nuance. So we all know that working in children's social care is highly complex and sometimes answering an impact question we don't necessarily get the story that sits underneath that impact about how and why this practice is effective. So we're really interested in answering that nuanced question and often you get to that with more qualitative approaches. So speaking to the children and families who have received the intervention or speaking to the practitioners who deliver it and understanding their experience of the process and what was positive about it and where things could be improved. So that's impact and nuance. And then the last two, usefulness and empowerment, really kind of shine within the Practice in Need of Evidence programme. I think a broader kind of critique of research in general is that sometimes it can feel a bit disconnected to practice and not necessarily relevant to practitioners on the ground. Well, this is sort of turning that upside down. So practice in need of evidence is entirely sector led. It's where we say to people who are doing work in children's social care that's already working, come to us and we'll support you to do your own evaluation of that practice. So that's essentially local research into existing practice so it's going to be useful isn't it because it relates to stuff that you're already doing on a day-to-day -day basis and it's going to empower you as practitioners to show what's working and continue to do what's working and potentially make decisions about where things aren't working what can be tweaked to improve delivery and impact so this slide's really important in kind of setting the scene for our motivation as the What Works Centre for why we are doing a second round of our Practice in Need of Evidence programme. Okay. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the programme and where it came from. So engagement has been a really important part of our, of our early journey as a What Works Centre. We've visited lots of local authorities to learn about their practice and understand what their priorities are in terms of the research agenda. And one of the, the things that struck me um, during those visits is that there's excellent practice all over the country, regardless of Ofsted rating, regardless of location, everywhere we go, somebody's doing something really amazing to improve the lives of the children and families they're working with. But there's very little evidence about that other than 
anecdotal evidence. So I see there being a real gap in the sector and, and a gap in the um, in the kind of evidence map for the country around this type of practice. And I, that's the space that I want to get into with this programme and create some evidence about what's already working, that's already being delivered by practitioners. So what is practice in need of evidence? It's um, working with the most promising practice around the country and using the most rigorous methods to find out what works. So it, as I said before, it's quite ambitious. We've got this kind of aspiration that we're going to be able to answer a question about what's impacting on children and families in a really robust way, which is very exciting. Um, we have a range of different things that we offer organisations in order to support them to achieve this. So we call them products and services, um, but they're different ways that we can work alongside you to help you achieve a really high quality evaluation. And in addition to the kind of evaluation report that you'll have at the end of this, what we also seek to do is to have a, a wider impact on the organisational culture. So our, our aim is that when we leave you at the end of this process, the whole organisation will be slightly different in terms of how it thinks about evidence and its demand for it. So we'd really like to see organisations as a result saying, what else do we do that works and how else might we be able to demonstrate the impact that we're having with families? So we're kind of effectively moving towards a bit of a cultural change in the sector towards a more evidence minded approach. And finally, this is kind of what we get out of it as a centre, but working so closely with organisations means that it deepens our understanding of current practice and helps us understand some of the challenges out there that get in the way of us generating really high quality evidence. And that helps us think about how we progress as a centre so that we're making sure that we're meeting the needs of the, of the, of the sector and that we're improving outcomes for children and families through our activity as well. Right, the next slide is quite a lot of information on this slide, so I'm just going to try and simplify it for you slightly, but it's important because it's about demonstrating that evidence is a journey towards what works. Um, and we see that there are being broadly four steps on this journey. The first step we call promise of evidence. The second step, confusingly, is called evidence of promise, just to see if you're paying attention. And the third one is evidence of impact. And finally, we have scale of impact. So I'll explain each of these four steps um, briefly, and then I'll talk to you about where the PINE programme sits in terms of this journey. So promise of evidence is really the foundation. It's, it's building the, a strong foundation for the future development of evidence. It's about having a really well-defined intervention, ideally through um, sort of depicted through a theory of change or through a logic model, which is like a, a diagram, essentially, of your theory of change. So it shows how you think your intervention works, how you think it impacts on outcomes. So it's very hard for us to measure whether something's working unless we're really crystal clear about what that thing is and what the intention is with that thing. So that's a really important first step. And once we've got that, once we have a theory and we have a logic model, there's a promise of evidence. That's where the name comes from. So the second stage, evidence of promise, is where we've started to look at the impact that our um, intervention might be having and the might is the operative word there in evidence of promise we're not proving that the impact was definitely caused by our intervention but what we're seeing is that the evidence would suggest that things are going in the right direction so we're looking for an intervention that has been delivered in the way that we expected it to be we're looking for an intervention that people are saying feels like it works and then we might be seeing some data that would suggest that outcomes were moving in the right direction. Um, and the third level is evidence of impact. So this is the first point at which we were really and truly proving that the intervention is the thing that's made the difference. Um, now, the, the best way of achieving that methodologically is by conducting a randomised controlled trial. That means that we have a group of people who receive the intervention and a comparison group who don't, and that we're able to use data analysis to compare 
the experiences of those groups and and the groups would be the same essentially all else everything else would be equal between those two groups so any change that we see we can reliably attribute to the intervention that's quite big technical stuff we are not expecting local organizations and partner agencies to be running randomized control trials at all that's kind of the stuff for into the future um, and that the what work center would be running rather than local organizations but it's helpful to know that it's only at that point that we really start to prove impact and then the fourth level the final step on the journey is scale of impact that's where a number of studies have been done on one intervention and those studies can be brought together normally in like a systematic review or a meta-analysis so that's a very very high quality of evidence because you're drawing from a really large pool of information so we can um, give more weight to the findings obviously that's not what we're proposing to do within the PINE program with PINE we're our aspiration is that we will get to promise of evidence and evidence of promise at the most so depending on your the maturity of your intervention and the way that we design the evaluation with you we'll get somewhere between one and two um, which is you know taking really sure steps on a journey towards finding out what works and is a really um, a really good quality of evidence to achieve with this program and I think is really realistic for organizations um, so yeah it's really exciting so what's the pine offer so if you apply to the program and you're successful this is what you can expect to receive as part of the pine program so there'll be a memorandum of understanding and as we're talking about multi-agency working here that will need to be brokered between all of the partner agencies and the work center so it's absolutely crucial here that we have buy-in from all of the key stakeholder agencies i think we'll find these evaluations won't work if it's just one organization trying to take it forward so it's absolutely vital that we think about that um buy-in and the way that we're going to work together as a, as a group right at the very outset the next thing is there'll be a preparation event where we will visit your um, your multi-agency partnership and we, we want to find out about your intervention basically we want to learn about your practice and feel like we really understand what it is that you're doing and we'll also use that opportunity to upskill the multi-agency partners in the research methods that they'll be using and the whole process that's about to come um, following the event so that everybody's clear about what they're embarking on and the third part is the actual self-evaluation um, through what we call the pine portal so this is the the meat and bones of the of the piece of work this is where you actually go out and do your self-evaluation and on the next screen I have this is a screenshot of the pine portal which I can talk you through Briefly, so as you'll see, the portal is separated into four stages describe, plan, do, and review. Each stage has a range of different resources within it um, that are everything you need in order to plan and deliver a really high quality evaluation. And built into this process at the end of each of these stages is a consultation with What Works Centre research team so you're not on your own with this at all and over and above those kind of standard consultation points you're you can have as much support as you need with this and we we appreciate that people are going to be at different points in their journey and some people will be happy to get on with things um on their own a lot of the time and other organizations would like to do that more in partnership with us and we're completely open and committed to providing as much support as we need to and I think what you can take from this screenshot is that we're giving you the raw tools and resources that you need in order to do the evaluation. But actually a lot of the planning and a lot of the decisions about what that looks like in practice are over to you. So you get to decide what your evaluation looks at specifically. You get to decide how you're going to gather information, whether you're going to how much you're going to rely on data, how much you're going to rely on qualitative methods. And everything will be completely bespoke to your intervention. Okay. 
Um, and between do and review, so the last two sections, that's where the data analysis happens. And that's the part that what works for children's social care researchers really step in and do a lot of that data analysis for, um, for the organisation. So you're getting the benefit of, of the expertise in our research team to really provide a high quality of data analysis that you can then present in the review section as you wish for your final evaluation document. Okay. Right, I think that's the, those are the main messages about what Pine is and how we came to develop the programme. I think that's it, so any questions? Should we go over to... The mail first? Yeah, yeah just, just hear some reflections from the mail and then we can go through questions that may be sure. from both of you. Sure. Yep, so, uh, yeah, thanks Emma. I, I mean, just to echo what some Anna's been saying, it's been really um, great to see genuine levels of enthusiasm and commitment and energy from local authorities to kind of grow and develop their local innovation. Um, it's not a surprise to us that the skills and the kind of expertise to develop no, new initiatives are so um, kind of evident within the local authorities. But what's been great for us is to be able to support local authorities to really think about evaluation right at the start of this process and really zoom in on any outcomes and particularly their kind of evaluation questions. It's also been good to um, enable local authorities to learn about and develop theories of change and work through developing a logic model. So, you know, as Anna was saying, it's, yes, it's very much over to you, but, you know, we're, we're, we've got regular kind of check-in sessions and it's really great to kind of see local authorities moving through that process. And I think what I value about the project is it's really developing and keeping the learning within the local authorities. So it's not you know, it's really helping to, to kind of skill people up in those areas, in my experience. Brilliant. That's really helpful to hear how it's been going so far. There's some really positive developments, so thank you, Namal. We do have some, um, some good questions um, here coming through, so perhaps we can start with a few practical ones, um, just to reiterate um, a little bit more about the process of application. So um, if you could just tell us, Anna, how long would it take and just a little bit more about what you would need from applicants, time commitments, etc. Okay, yep, yeah, sure, no problem. So um, the application deadline closes at the end of November and we anticipate being able to announce successful partners by just before Christmas, I think it's Friday the 20th of December. So we wouldn't be looking to start any of these programmes until sort of early in 2020. Um, and we're quite flexible around that, so we would work with organisations to make sure we were starting at a point that worked well for them. And once we're off and running, we anticipate that the whole process will take between 9 to 12 months, and that will be dependent on kind of the complexity of the practice that you're delivering and how many resources you have available to commit to it. Um, I suppose for each stage of the process, um, I expect describe to take around two months, plan to take around two months, do to take three months and review around two months. And by that I mean you know, a lead person within the organisation doing it on top of their day job. So I'm not I don't mean somebody working on it full time for that amount of time. I'm appreciate that everybody's busy with their operational responsibilities. So this is about thinking about how it can fit around that. Brilliant, thank you. That's really helpful to know. And as Anna said earlier, um, there's plenty of support available from um, the What Works for Children's Social Care team who will be there with you every step of the way and very flexible um, offer yes. of support as well. So thanks for that. Um, a few questions on um, this particular round, which is focusing on multi-agency interventions. Um, I wonder if we can just go to this question. Um, can on only local authorities apply? or can other types of organisation? Um, that's, that's one question. And then the second one here is, um, why is this only for multi-agency working? And can we apply with something that's single agency? OK. So I think the, the, uh, the answer to why we're focusing on multi-agency is really that we know that it's something that's happening in every children's social care organisation across the country. You know, we have to work together. 
as statutory agencies to deliver our safeguarding services. And I think what we've noticed in our travels around the country is that people are coming up with really innovative ways of delivering that, that kind of go above and beyond our statutory responsibilities, because people are finding that the closer we work together, the better it is for children and families and the more efficient and effective those services are. However, there's very little out there that tells us about how to do that well, and people are um, working intuitively and really innovatively, and I think that it would help the, the sector and the development of our practice if we were able to provide an evidence base about the way to do that well. So that's why we've chosen to um, have a theme for this round of practice in need of evidence looking specifically at multi-agency working. We absolutely intend that there will be future rounds of PINE, some that will have another theme and others that will be open to any type of practice because it feels like there's a real appetite for doing this sort of work, which is fantastic. And your other question was, can other types of organisation apply? Yes, absolutely. The local authority or the children's social care team doesn't have to be the lead applicant on this application process. It could be the police, it could be health, it could be housing, it could be any other statutory agency, as long as they're working in a multi-agency way to deliver an outcome that impacts on children and families. Great, that's helpful. There is a clarification question here just around what's the difference between multi-agency and multidisciplinary? We'll just touch on that briefly. Yeah, uh, that's a really helpful question because, um, yeah, it, it's, it's quite a nuanced difference and I suppose we have our own definition for the difference between multi-agency and multidisciplinary. We see multi-agency as where statutory agencies have come together and agreed between them to co-deliver a service and we see multidisciplinary as where one organisation has employed um, professionals from different disciplines and expertise to work in the same team. So we're, we're not looking for multidisciplinary working in this instance, we're, we're only looking at these arrangements where we have statutory agencies who've come together to deliver a service. Great, thank you. I mean, any further questions on some of these distinctions or whether you think your local practice would fit, do get in touch and that uh, can be worked through. Um, and actually on that subject, there are a few questions on what's the criteria for choosing successful applications. So perhaps we could just go over that um, and just to give people a clear idea of what to expect. Yeah, so um, understandably this is going to be quite um, reliant on resource, so depending on how many applications we get, on the scale and maturity of the practice that we'll be looking to support you to evaluate, that will impact on the number of applications that are successful. Um, what I will say is that we're going to make sure that we're drawing um, colleagues from other um, what work centres and other agencies in to help us with the decision making process. So it's really important, for example, that if we're looking at multi agency practice that involves police and social care working together, that we involve um, people who know about the police service in, the, in that decision making process. Um, so we'll definitely be doing that within December when we're looking at our applications. Great. Just out of interest, um, this is important, if you're being evaluated elsewhere, is, is it possible to apply? I think if you've previously had an evaluation that doesn't look at impact, that looks at other types of um, research into your practice, then that's absolutely fine and we can use that evaluation as kind of a springboard um, for this one. However, if you've already been evaluated as part of the innovations programme, then we wouldn't be accepting those practices onto this programme. So no innovations programme evaluations, but other types of previous evaluation are generally OK. Um, if, you're, if you've got an evaluation and you're not sure about whether it would um, preclude you from being part of the programme, please just get in touch and, and share it with us and we'll help, help work that out with you. Brilliant. We're nearly coming to a close, but perhaps we could just um, close on this um, practical point. Um, a few people are wondering, will we receive funding for this project? Okay, so there's no actual funding available for successful partners here, but what you are will receive if you're successful is all of the resources and support from What Works for Children's Social Care 
free of charge. And one of the things that's great about the portal, which I probably should have said earlier, that once you're um, successfully accepted onto the programme, you'll receive a login to the portal. And all of those resources are then free for you to use for any other piece of work that you want to. And we actively encourage that. So um, you're opening up your organisation and your multi-agency partners to a wealth of resources that could improve and enable them to evaluate lots of different types of practice going mm. forward into the future so it's really worthwhile coming on board mm. i'll just i'll just add there to what anna's just said that you know we've seen um in relation to the pine portal the self-evaluation portal the steps and questions can really help to guide your kind of strategy on how other innovation projects can weave together so although it might not necessarily uh you know it's being evaluated elsewhere that's some of the kind of themes that I've noticed as we've been going up and down the country is like finally you can kind of see it in people's eyes that go oh we can use this to think about what is a common thread with all these other innovation projects that mm -hmm. we're working on so that's been it's it's been a real strength yeah brilliant yeah. so some really really useful practical resources to support people through the pine program um, of course, um, people are going to have further questions to today. Um, so what's the best way to get in touch beyond this webinar? So they can contact um, me at the What Work Centre. We can attach my email as part of the presentation, can we, Steve? Yep. And um, you can also contact What Work Centre at our generic um, email address from our website or contact us on Twitter. Um, and we'd be very happy to have any further discussions with you about an application or if just if you have questions, that's no problem. Brilliant. That's really, really helpful. Thank you both, Anna and Namal, for today. That's been really helpful. Do get in touch if you've got any further questions. We look forward to hearing from you. So goodbye from Anna. And Bye. goodbye from Namal. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for joining us.